So chapter three is all about scatter plots, correlation, and regression lines. Okay? So we will go through all of that in the next two weeks. And so, first of all, scatter plots. What is a scatter plot? It's like a scatter plot. It, it's like a dot plot-ish, but it kind of looks like a dot plot, right? Because there's dots everywhere, but they're not, like, stacked on top of something. Like, there's an X and a Y coordinate for each dot, okay? And that is because we are looking at two quantitative variables. So, a scatter plot is a plot of the relationship... between two quantitative variables. It is a plot of the relationship between two quantitative variables. So, can I have a scatter plot that shows SAT score versus hair color? No, no. no why not? Hair color is not quantitative. That's categorical. Uh, could I do SAT and ACT scores? Yeah. SAT and GPA? Yeah. Uh, shoe size and car type? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, gender and anything else? Yeah. No. I can never have gender on a scatter plot because it's not quantitative. It's categorical. So these have to be quantitative variables. All right, why do we use scatter plots? What are they useful for? Uh, two quantitative it is for two quantitative variables. What am I trying to see about them? Very good. This is to assess correlation. This is to assess correlation. All right, now, what is the difference between an explanatory and a response variable? So back in algebra, you probably did not call your X and Y uh, variables these names, explanatory and response. What, uh, what did you call your X and Y variables in algebra? Dependent and Y. Your dependent and independent or just the X and Y? Uh, so in stats, we call them the explanatory variable and the response variable. Which one do you think goes on the X axis? Yeah, the explanatory variable is going on the X axis. That's what you guys are used to calling the independent variable. The response variable obviously then goes on the Y axis and that's what you guys are used to calling the dependent variable. And so why do you think we call them that? Or how, how can I tell the difference between which one is which? So yes, I agree. When you actually have the graph, obviously the explanatory variable is the one on the x-axis. But if you're just reading a problem and you don't have the graph yet, and you have to decide which one to put on the x-axis, how do you know? One responds to the other. Yeah, that's correct. What were you going to say, Aaron? I was just going to like, read the question and Good, good. It's all about how the relationship of those two variables are defined. So basically we're hoping that the explanatory variable helps to explain what's happening for the response. All right, so explanatory, explanatory should help explain the response. Sometimes it's super clear. It's easy to know. Sometimes it's maybe a little bit like, oh, this could kind of go either way, right? So does your SAT score um, help to explain your ACT score? Or does your ACT score help to explain your SAT score? That one can kind of go either way, okay? But does your GPA help explain your SAT score? Or does your SAT score help explain your GPA? probably your GPA is going to help explain your SAT score because the GPA is kind of a better baseline of what kind of student or something like that, what kind of classes you've taken. Usually that's the way it would go. 
All right, what about scaling our axis? We talk a lot about scaling our axis in this class and making sure we label them and all that stuff. How do we scale the axis? Do they have to be scaled the same? Do they have to start at zero? Like, what do we do? Perfect. It totally depends on the variables in the question. Gentlemen, it totally depends on the variables in the question. But here's the big thing that everybody feels like, well, Miss Lakey, you've told us we had to do this. We had, okay, but it's different for scatter plots. The y axis does not have to start at zero. So, in a quantitative one variable scenario, when I'm making a histogram or a dot plot or something like that, Yes, I should start my y-axis at zero. But in a scatter plot, I just need to start my y-axis and my x-axis at my lowest number and go to my highest number. And the scale increments don't have to match between the two. You'll see that on the next problem. All right, let's do an actual scatter plot. Um, do you guys ever go to the movies? Never have. Never in your whole life? Wow, that's terrible. I'm so sad for you. Uh, how many of you uh, are, you like to eat popcorn at the movies? Like extra butter. Like, you know if you tell them to layer the butter, that they will actually like stop like halfway, put butter, and then put more popcorn, then more butter? You should try that. It's good stuff. Um, but do any of you guys get candy when you go to the movies? Yes. No. Okay, what kind of candy are you getting? Twizzlers. Yeah. Any of you eat those snow caps? It's like those, they look like chocolate Hershey Kisses with little dots on the top. Yeah, those are okay. Junior Mints, anyone? Yeah, yeah. Uh, peanut M&Ms? Oh, that's good. Reese's, Be Reese's Pieces? Milk Duds? Uh, okay. Well, these are some of the candies that I have just mentioned. These are the sugar grams and the calories for some of our, the most popular movie theater candies. Um, I will actually, as we continue through our notes, this example is going to keep coming back, and I'll tell you some of them as we talk about them. All right, so sugar grams, calories, which one of those do you think is the explanatory? Which one do you think is the response? Which one is the explanatory? So you think the sugar grams is, ex is helping to explain the number of calories? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you guys know what three things make up how many calories something has? Sugar, sugar carbs. Sugar, sugar. So carbs and sugar is a part of the carbs. Sodium. Fat and, protein. fat and protein. Very good. Very good. Sugar, or I'm sorry, carbs, fat, and protein. All right. So our explanatory response is the sugar. And the response, I'm sorry, the explanatory variable is the sugar. The response variable is the calories. And this is because the sugar content helps explain the number of calories. All right, I'm fairly confident that if you are sitting in AP statistics, I could have you guys make a scatter plot by hand, and you could make an x-axis, a y-axis, go to the x value, go to the y value, put a dot, go to the x value, go to the y value, put a dot. I'm pretty confident you can do that. If you can't, don't tell me. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a scatter plot using our calculator, okay? So we're going to do this on our calculator. Um, and we're going to display this relationship and then we're going to sketch the scatter plot. So if everybody can go to their calculator, what's the first thing you should do? Turn it on. <laughs> All right. Now we need to put this data in our calculator. How do you put data in your calculator? Yeah, stat edit. We need to go to stat edit. All right, everybody go to stat edit on your calculator. Now, which one of these do you think you should put into L1? Sugar. Yeah, you're going to go down L1, and you're going to put the sugar content in L1. And then you'll put the calories over in L2. Is it ever going to check this like that? Because, like, 
Um, yeah, so most people look at this and they go, oh, the top one is X, the bottom one is Y. Um, that's just not always the case, but it is very commonly the case that the top is going to be X and the whatever. Yeah, that's so will we trick you? Not necessarily on purpose, but I mean, it could happen. And then do we put the other stuff in L2? Yeah, so we're putting our X list in L1, our Y list in L2. Um, does it matter that you match up the values the way that they are matched up in the graph or in the, in the uh, table? Yes, absolutely. Because these are not just a list of X values and a list of Y values. This is a candy that has 45 grams of sugar had 450 uh, calories. So like these are matched up as an ordered pair. So they do have to go together. Sometimes they don't, and that's just if they are two separate values, but these go together. All right, do we have our data in? Okay. Um, so our data is in our calculator. Where do we usually go to see a graph of uh, stuff that's in our calculator? We hit graphs. Everybody hit graph. Do you see anything? No, you probably don't. Here's why. You have not turned on the scatter plot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the second y equals. That is, you see above it says stat plot. This is where we're going to go to turn on any of our statistical plots. So right now, you should be seeing this screen that says plot one is off, plot two is off, plot three is off. Everything's off right now. It should be. If it's not off, go ahead and go to plots off and make sure you turn them all off. So what? how did I get here? I went to second y equals. Second y equals. Y1, Y2, Y3. So you didn't hit the second button. Second y equals. They should all be off. Go ahead and make sure they're all off right now. Because otherwise, maybe you did something weird in your calculator or something. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to turn on the first plot. To do that, we're just going to hit enter on plot one. And we're going to hit enter on on. Now, I want you guys to make sure that that takes the highlighting off of the off and on to the on. Okay. There are six different graphs that your calculator can make for you. The first one is the scatter plot. That, that's the first option. The second one is called a time plot. We're not going to use that. The third one is a histogram. So your calculator can actually make a histogram for you. Um, then it has a box plot, and that's a box plot that actually shows the outliers. Why didn't I show this to you back in chapter one? I know, right? If I had shown that to you back in chapter one, you wouldn't know how to do a box plot by hand. Um, here's a box plot. The fifth option is a box plot that does not show outliers. You should never use that. And then this last one is this weird graph that we don't use. All right. So your on should be highlighted. Your scatter plot should be highlighted. Your X list should say L1 because that's where you put your X values, right? Your Y list should say L2 because that's where you put your Y list, right? Uh, for the mark, you can pick whichever one you want. It doesn't matter. If you can change colors, feel free to pick your color. It's fine. Now, I do want to show you guys real quick. What if this did not say L1? Or what if my list, what if I accidentally put my list into L2? Do I have to erase and start over? No. You can change the L1 and L2 to anything. Second and the two would change that to L2. To get it back to L1, second and the number one gets it back to L1, okay? So that's just how you can change that. All right, cool. Now that we have our stats in and we have our stat plot turned on, we should now be able to hit graph and see this scatter plot. Hit graph. Oh, no. What did we do wrong? We didn't do anything wrong, you guys. It's the window, right? But we're not going to go to window. We're going to do the fast way which is zoom, and if you hit the number nine, that zooms to the statistical plot. 
So if you do zoom nine, boom, it's there. Zoom nine. Then you can just hit zoom nine. What is it? Does it? Can you see what the error is? So if it's saying syntax error, here's what I need you to do. I need you to hit y equals because chances are you have something weird in your y equals. Maybe you maybe you pushed some buttons when it was in your in your backpack or something. So clear out anything in your y equals. You just go to that line and hit clear or delete, and then hit zoom nine, and it's, you should see it. So did that fix it? Did yours fix it? Yeah. What? Okay, so what yours is, if you'll go back to, so invalid dimensions, go back to stat edit. Make sure that you have the same number of values in each of your lists. Okay, so you have deleted your L1. Wow. Wow, what do you do? You freak out, don't you? No, no, don't do that. Here's what you can do. So go up to where it says L2, for example. So watch, uh, I'm going to do it so everybody can see what happens. So I'm going to do, I'll, I'll tell you what I just did in a second. So here's what happens, you guys. You go up to L1 and you think you're, de you're clearing it and you hit delete. Oh my gosh, I literally just deleted my whole L1 list. So here's what you do. You're doing this with me, right, Aaron? All right, go up to L2, make sure L2 is highlighted. Hit second, delete, which is the insert button. And now you're gonna hit second and the number one and then enter. And it should say L1 now. Now, your L1 is currently empty, right? So what you need to do with the L1 highlighted is you need to do second and L2 to change that to what you have in L2, which is your L1 list. Then you're going to go to the L2 list and you're going to put in L3. So second and L3. Okay. Got it? I did. Now hit zoom nine. Ta-da! Any other errors that anyone's having? Perfect. Okay, so zoom nine. Here's our graph. Now, this is all fancy and stuff, but guys, what are these numbers? Hit trace. Hit trace. It will automatically go to the first value in your in your list. So 45 and 450, that was the first value. If you hit the right arrow, it'll go to the second value in your list. Hit the right arrow again, it'll keep taking you to the next value and the next value. So let's say I wanna know what this dot is way up top here. I just have to hit my left and right arrow until I get to it. And then I will be able to see what that value is. So that value is, there it is, 79 and 790. That means there's some candy out there that has 79 grams of fat and 790 calories. There's a lot of fat in that. Why would there be a lot of fat? I'm sorry, sugar. There's a lot of sugar, sorry. I'm saying fat, I meant sugar. There's a lot of sugar in that and there's 790 calories. Why would there be so much sugar in there? It's pure sugar. What's a candy that you can get at the theaters that's like pure sugar? It's kind of a pixie stick, but compressed into little round things that you eat. Sweet tarts. That candy is sweet tarts. Okay. All right. What questions do you guys have about making this in your calculator? Now, um, how do I get from what I see on my calculator to here you go, Miss Lakey, here's my test. And, oh, I'm just going to turn in my calculator, right? Yeah. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. How are we going to do this? We're going to sketch this on our paper. So, do you guys know what it means to sketch? It literally means a rough estimate. So, here we go. We're going to make an X and a Y axis. Literally a rough estimate here, an X and Y axis. Okay, cool. There's my origin. What's my lowest number on my x-axis? 
on my sugar. 44 is the lowest. So like around 45 is my lowest. What's the highest number? Like the 136. So I don't know, maybe we could go by what? Like, you wanna go by 20s? Okay, so 45, 65, 85, 105. 125, 145. Okay, cool. I like that. So there's my x axis. I've got a scale. Uh, what's the lowest number on my y axis? Um, no, it's 370. 350. 350. And I've got to get all the way up to what's the highest number? 790. What do you guys want to go by? Let's go by hundreds. So like 450, 550, 650, 750, and 850. Okay, cool. So there's my ish scale, right? Now, I literally do not want you guys to do 45, 450, dot, dot. I don't want you to do that. We're sketching it. So just kind of look at the pattern on your calculator and kind of shift it onto your paper. So literally, we're just putting the dots that you kind of see on your calculator. We're putting them on our, our, there you go. There it is. Is that perfect? No. Does it have to be? No. It's just a sketch. We're just kind of taking the pattern and kind of shifting it over to our paper. It does not have to be perfect. They are not going to be in exactly the right places, and it's totally fine, you guys. I will tell you that the majority of the time, you will be given the scatter plot and asked to do things with it. So you're very rarely going to make a scatter plot anyway. Like analyze it? Yeah, we're going to do a lot of analytics with our scatter plots. We're not going to have to make them very often. That's what you guys are going to find in this chapter is a lot of just analyzing what you're given. Oh my gosh, Garrick, thank you. You guys, I literally just missed 10 points on my test because I did not label my axis. Oh my gosh. Sugar and calories. Thank you, Garrick. Thanks. Bonus points on your test. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. When we are looking at the relationship in a scatter plot and these two quantitative variables, I'm going to want to look at four characteristics. Any guesses what those four characteristics might be? It would seem like shape, outlier, center, spread, because that's what SOC stands for, and that's what we've been doing our whole lives, right? But actually, it's a different four. Strength. This is how strongly correlated are the data values? How strong are they to making a very clear pattern? So basically, you would use words like weak, moderate and strong and you can kind of go in between these a little bit you can say that it's moderately strong or moderately weak or you could just say it's a moderate association yes so we're going to have to put like a value to that. yes we're going to put a value to that tomorrow when we do correlation so the strength is our correlation but for now for today we're just going with these oh yeah strength outliers you guys, outliers, you are pretty comfortable with them. What are outliers? They're kind of unusual va values in the data, right? So these are going to be our unusual, unusual data values. So these are going to be your values that are very far away from the majority of the dots. Strength outliers, we're going to want to look at form. This is where we don't have socks anymore, sorry. We're gonna to wanna to look at form. Now, in this class, we only care about if it's linear or nonlinear. You do not have to tell me if it's quadratic or cubic or exponential. You don't have to go all that craziness. You just have to say, is it linear or not? 
That's it. And then the last thing is, anybody want to guess what it starts with? A. It does start with an A. Association. Association. This is where you tell me the direction of the association. And so this is either positive, negative, or if for some reason you just really can't see any kind of a direction, you would just say there's no association or none. So yeah, what does this spell? Sofa. Sofa is not as fun as socks, but when you wear your socks, sometimes you want to curl up on your sofa. But we are looking at the relationship between two quantitative variables. So we're looking at two quantitative variables relationship. And when you're sitting with the person that you're in a relationship with, where should you sit? On the sofa. You shouldn't be sitting anywhere else, just on the sofa. <laughs> Nowhere else, just the sofa. In the media room with your parents. It's perfect. All right, let's look at these real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, right? Me too. All right, this is, uh, this is, you guys know Old Faithful? Have you ever heard of Old Faithful? So Old Faithful is a geyser that will erupt hot steaming water and it erupts for a certain amount of time, usually between like one and a half minutes all the way up to like five minutes. It could be spewing for five minutes. And then this is that amount of time versus the amount of time until the next eruption. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna do the sofa on this. We're gonna describe this relationship. Well, what would you guys think this strength is? This is actually moderately strong. Yes. Now, again, tomorrow I'm going to give you numbers. For now, just know this is moderately strong. You'll start to see that as we look at the numbers. Outliers. Do you guys think there's any outliers? No, not really. What about form? Are you seeing a linear pattern or a nonlinear pattern? Yeah, you can kind of see a linear pattern here. And then what about the association? What direction does this go? This is definitely positive. All right, over here on the right, we have the gross national income and the fertility rate for 187 countries. What do you guys think about the strength? Now, looking at this, I'm talking about the strength of how they make a pattern. This is also probably moderately strong. All right, outliers. Do you guys see an outlier? Yeah, this guy right here is for sure an outlier. In a scatter plot, if you identify an outlier, you need to give me the coordinates. What are the coordinates for that guy? 25,000 and five. Okay. All right, form. Linear or not? Non-linear. Non Anybody know what form that is? That is exponential decay. And what do you guys think about the association? Uh, this is negative. As one is increasing, the other is decreasing. So that's a negative association.